Hey everybody, how's everybody doing? How's all my mountain friends? I'm excited. I'm going to make a black walnut cake and this um, is from scratch and I will be sharing the recipe, but feel free to follow, get you a piece of paper uh, if you want to and you can jot down uh, the measurements as I go, but I will be posting this recipe under photos, under photo albums, and the album is um, titled Recipes, okay? So um, I will be posting that, but this is an old fashioned from scratch black walnut cake. And you're gonna be using a two pan, you know, a bump pan. And let me just tell y'all what's in it. Uh, first of all, you're going to need uh, two cups of flour. So you're gonna need all purpose flour. And I use, um, I use Hudson cream all purpose because it's very fine, very light. You don't have to sift it. Uh, it's just the lightest flour ever. And it's what I love for baking. So I'm using all purpose, uh, self uh, not self rising, all purpose, Hudson cream flour, I'll get it out here in a minute. So, y'all, this cake is so good. A lady in our church used to make it, and she's already uh, she's already uh, passed away, but she made this cake, and this is her recipe, Sister Belle Hatfield, uh, and I'm gonna make it for y'all, and it is so good, and I'm going to also be making the cream cheese frosting for it. So, so we're gonna start out with the cake part. So you're going to need two cups let me read this off to y'all to start with, start out with. So you're gonna need two cups of flour. You can use cake flour, you can use all-purpose, it don't really matter. I'm using all-purpose flour, okay? Two teaspoons of baking powder, a fourth a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of vanilla, one and a half cups of sugar, regular sugar, white sugar, Two thirds cup of Crisco shortening or vegetable shortening, whatever you have. I'm using vegetable shortening. Three fourths cup of buttermilk. Three eggs separated. So you're gonna need three egg whites. So here's my whites. And it's always best to have your eggs room temperature. And here's three egg yolks. These are large eggs two cups of black walnuts. Now, black walnuts are different than English walnuts. Most people eat English walnuts. Black walnuts are more expensive, yes. But the black walnuts make the difference in this cake. Uh, these, are the, these are the kind of walnuts I grew up eating. We used to crack walnuts. Um, we used to have a black walnut tree. Um, and I was raised in a holler, so there was all kinds of wild black walnut trees in the holler. And every fall, we would go get them and run over them with the truck. Daddy run over them with the truck and stuff, and we'd crack them, and we'd have black walnuts. But I'm telling you, and you can even smell the difference in them. Black walnuts um, make the difference in this cake. So that's where it gets its name, black walnut cake. You're going to need black walnuts for this. I found mine at Kroger. And I'm going to toss these in a little flour because when you toss, anytime you're using nuts in a recipe, uh, they can sink to the bottom if you're not careful. So I am going to dust these with a little flour before I put them in the batter, okay? And it probably would take maybe just about a tablespoon or two and that's it. And you're going to need uh, a half a teaspoon of baking soda, okay? Right there baking soda. So let me get, so you're going to start out, you're going to cream your shortening, your sugar, and your vanilla until fluffy, okay? So um, let me get you, I'm going to change the camera over and we'll do that part. All right y'all, so here is two thirds cup of shortening, one and a half cup of sugar, and a teaspoon of vanilla in there. As you see, my vanilla is dark, but that's okay. And I am creaming that together. And I'm gonna scrape down my sides here. So I've scraped down my sides and you can see 
the sugar and the shortening kind of fluffy that's what you need now you're going to add in your yolks try to try to put them in one at a time sometimes it's hard to do that it's okay though now the reason you're separating the yolks from the white i'm going to be beating the whites to stiff peaks and you're going to fold them white into this batter we're going to beat that so it's fluffy i usually let it go a couple of minutes and i'm going to scrape down the sides again so i scraped down the sides and now i'm going to just go uh get my dry ingredients ready and then we'll start putting this together and adding the wet to the to the dry so guys at this point um you want to whip you're going to beat these egg whites okay this is three egg whites and you want whenever to, whenever you're doing egg whites or whipped cream or anything like that and you're going to be whipping them you want to use a wire whisk and you wanna make sure your bowl is clean, no oil or grease or anything in it. And I'm gonna whip these egg whites to stiff peaks. So you wanna get that done and have them, have them ready, okay? Also, I want to let y'all know, um, to have your oven preheated to 350, okay? Alrighty, now it's, turn. it's time for the uh, egg whites to be whipped. You want to whip these to stiff peaks and it's always best to make sure that they are room temperature. What I do is this is gradually when they get foamy I start increasing my speed. Okay, they're done. That is a stiff peak. A stiff peak is when it when they'll stick straight up and they'll hold their shape. Um a soft peak, they'll kind of droop it'll droop a little bit, but that right there is a stiff peak. So these are stiff peaked egg whites. So I'm gonna set these aside. All right, now it's time to put the uh, dry ingredients uh, together. So you're gonna do two cups of flour. Let me make sure I'm getting it right here. Two cups of flour. Now remember, whenever you're measuring flour, you always wanna do level. You never wanna pack it down, but you always want to Level off. That's one cup. That's two. Oh yeah, let me get a little flour and I'm gonna get a little flour on the walnuts. Sprinkle them a little bit and uh, toss them around with your hands. So I'm just tossing them around a little bit. So if you coat, coat them a little bit with your flour, with a little flour, they won't sink to the bottom. Okay. I'll just set them aside. Now here is your um, your flour. So what you're gonna do now, you're gonna put in your baking powder. Let me get my glasses on, make sure I can see right. 
So you need two teaspoons of baking powder. Now what, one rule, and when you're, especially when you're using baking powder, um, it calls for two teaspoons, but you wanna make sure, you always wanna make sure, um, whenever you're doing spices, or like for like, or baking or leaveners for, um, for bacon, you wanna make sure, for me personally, I do heaping. So this is two teaspoons of baking powder, but I'm gonna make sure these are heaping, okay? So that's one, two, like spices or anything like cinnamon, I always do heaping, okay? A half a teaspoon of salt. And I'm just using pink Himalayan sea salt. You can use whatever salt you have. And a half a teaspoon of soda or bacon, bacon soda. Same way with that, I just heap it in there. So what I do, I just stir it around a little bit. That way everything is even throughout. This cake is so good, y'all. With cream cheese frosting, it's so good. Sister Belle would always make these, uh, this cake for homecoming dinners. And it's, it's good, it's, it's a favorite. All right. All right, so what we're gonna do, I wanna sit this, what I wanna do now is, you're going to be adding your buttermilk uh, alternately with your dry ingredients into your sugar and egg mixture. And then, then we'll add in, then we'll fold in the walnuts and then we'll fold in the egg whites and then we'll bring it all together. I'll show y'all. All right, here's your, your wet. This is your uh, sugar, butter and egg mixture. You wanna start out low. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna drizzle. Go ahead and drizzle some into the buttermilk in. Then I'm gonna add the flour mixture in. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm going to um, scrape down the sides. So we're gonna add in the rest. I'm gonna put in the rest of the buttermilk. And the rest of the flour. Just want to mix it until it's all incorporated. Don't over mix. So now we're going to um, grease and flour this pan. Now uh, this is a blunt cake and sometimes these can be a little tricky and your cake can stick, especially when it's a scratch cake and especially when it's um, a dense cake. So you want to make sure that this blunt pan is well greased. So what I do, I use shortening 
and I get, I use a lot, okay? I get around the rim, uh, the middle part really well. And I go all the way around. And I go all the way up the sides. And where there's a lot of crevices in this kind of pan, make sure you get, take your fingers and go down into the grooves really good. And grease it really well. It's a messy job, but it's necessary. <laughs> Gotta do it, y'all. Gotta do it. You can use butter, too, if you wanted. Um, it really don't matter. Sometimes you can use butter. Sometimes I do use butter. But for this cake, I'm going to use shortening. Okay? So let me wipe my hands off. Now you're gonna flour it, okay? Um, I just put, this is about a big old tablespoon probably. When you put your flour in there, I go all the way around, and you go all the way, and this is, this is a light colored bump pan, so it's a little, a little tricky to make sure this is not a darker one to make sure you're getting all the flour that you need but make sure you go all the way around and pat it and make sure you're going all the way up to the to the top okay because this is a this makes a lot of batter and it's going to this cake is going to be about three quarters full and make sure you go all the way up And whatever excess you got, just, I just put mine over the trash can and let the rest of it fall out. Okay. All righty. All right, so now it's time for your walnuts. What I do is just put them in my hands and kind of shake a little bit of the excess flour off of them. I'm going to throw them all in there and then I'm just going to put my, um, my mixer on low. And I'm just going to mix the batter just enough to get my walnuts um, mixed in. Just going to mix them long enough to get the walnuts throughout the batter. Now I'm going to add the egg whites. I'm going to fold them in. Um, with my spatula. So now you're just going to fold in your egg whites. And you're just going to fold them just until it's all mixed in. So here is the batter. And I'm just finishing uh, folding in the egg whites. And you want them 
When you fold, that's exactly, see how I'm doing just that right there? You don't have to stir vigorously. You don't have to, you're just gonna fold them in ever so gently as you can. until you don't see any more streaks of the egg white. So now it's time to put it in the pan. Oven is preheated to 350. So what I do, I just take it and I just spoon it right into the pan because it's really thick. And when I get it all in, I take like a knife and I, um, I spread it out, make sure it's all in there even. And you wanna pat down your, uh, your, your pan too and make sure there's no air bubbles. This is gonna bake um, about, let's see, it says around 30 to 40 minutes or until a toothpick is inserted and it comes out clean. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna check it after about 30 minutes because I don't want it to overbake. And each, you know, every kind of oven varies, I know. So just check it, keep an eye on it. So what I'm doing, I'm just spreading it out And you want it even as you can get it. Okay, it looks pretty even to me. And just tap it down a little bit, give it a gentle shake. Now it just goes in the oven and I'll check it after about 30 minutes. The oven's preheated to 350. After about 30 minutes, I'm gonna check on it, but I'm gonna keep an eye on it anyway, um, making sure it's not getting too brown. But um, when it comes out, I'll show y'all what it looks like. Here is the, uh, I wanna be making the cream cheese frosting for the black walnut cake. Now that is a half of a block of cream cheese and a half a stick of unsalted butter in there. I don't have a written recipe for this. And since this is a bunt cake, I won't need as much frosting, uh, like say for a, like for a layered, um, red velvet cake or like a hummingbird cake or, you know, like standard cakes that do call for cream cheese frosting. When you're doing layer cakes, you need a lot more frosting, but this is a bunt cake, so I don't need as much. So I'm using a half a block of cream cheese, softened, and a half a stick of unsalted butter. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to beat that, beat them together until they're fluffy, which takes about five minutes. Then I'm gonna scrape down the sides. That's good and fluffy. And what I'm gonna add now is um, I wanna put about three cups of powdered sugar in here. So just watch. So um, when it comes to frosting, as long as you have the right combination of stuff, if you can pretty much make it taste good. If it's too thick, just add a little bit more milk or um, you can always modify to make your frosting. So you know, if you don't get the exact measurements, I don't use exact me measurements when it comes to frostings because I've just made them so much through the years. I've just, I just eyeball everything. So, but I will say you're going to need, when you make this, use either half and half or heavy cream. You can use whole milk. Um, 
And I am going to use clear vanilla instead of my regular vanilla because you want your cream cheese frosting to be um, to be pretty and white. So what I do, I just um, eyeball it a little bit. So that's probably probably about a teaspoon of clear vanilla. And I'm adding just a couple of drops, literally, of some lemon extract. If you have fresh lemon juice, juice it's better. I don't have any. I like to put just a little bit of lemon juice in my cream cheese frosting. It just gives it that extra tang that cream cheese frosting normally has. So I'm gonna put in my powdered sugar here. So I just put my powdered sugar right in. I'm gonna turn it on low. And I'm just gonna drizzle a little half and half in. And remember, if you put in too much liquid and it gets too thin, you can always add in a little more powdered sugar. And it's going to need more liquid. buttercream frosting. Cream cheese frosting is going to have a silky, smooth texture, kind of like a little sheen to it. Um, so what I do at this point, I just let it, I beat it for about probably five minutes. Doesn't need any more liquid, doesn't need any more powdered sugar. And when we come back, I'll show you all the consistency of it. Over here, the light's a little better. I want to show you all what cream cheese frosting should look like. See, it's really smooth and it's spreadable, and it's spreadable to where you can do swirls, make it look pretty, ever how you want to make it look. And cream cheese frosting usually isn't used for like piping or anything, it's just you just swirl it but it should be silky and smooth and it should have like a little sheen to it see look at that nothing better than cream cheese frosting now this can be used it's so good on um, cinnamon rolls you can put it on uh, cinnamon biscuits, you put it on French toast. <laughs> there are so many, um, so many possibilities for this frosting, but I just wanted to do, to, to uh, I just want to take a little bite. So look at that. See, it's creamy. It's so good. It's one of my favorites. Mmm. You'll never know. You can't taste the lemon as far as thinking that it's a, that it has a, that it's a lemon frosting. The lemon just makes it have a little more tang, but it really is better if you can use fresh lemon juice. But it's still just as good, and it's gonna be delicious on this black walnut cake, y'all. Can't wait.
All right, the black walnut cake is done. And the toothpick or the skewer is clean. So what I did uh, at 30 minutes, I checked it, it was still a little jiggly. So I set the timer and I let it bake about 10 more minutes. And it is beautiful and brown on the top and it is done. And you can see it's already pulled away from the edges. That's another good sign that it's done. So I'm gonna let it cool probably about 20 minutes and then I'm gonna flip it out um, on my cake pan. All right, y'all, we're gonna turn this cake out on, this is my, this is my cake pan, well, my bottom of my cake, um, my cake container and Turning cakes out can be tricky, so uh, I also wanna let you know, make sure you take a sharp knife and you go around the edges of your cake and round the middle too, and that way it lets loose a little bit of where it needs to let loose at. Um, and before you turn it out, always run a knife around um, the edge to help loosen the cake. So what I do, I just go ahead, let's see, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put the cake in my hands like this. And what I do, I just, I kind of eyeball it a little bit, make sure I got it in the middle. And I felt it come right out. Praise the Lord. It can be tricky, I'm telling you. And make sure y'all can see, I felt it come out. So hopefully it didn't break. <laughs> and you just lift it up. Well, it's hard to do with these mitts on. See that? Mm, 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 mm. I can smell the walnuts. Now it's off centered a little bit, which is fine. I can move it. Mmm, so good. Now, as you can see, you can see a little bit of the flour on top. When uh, it cools off just a little more, I'm gonna take my pastry brush and just brush that off a little bit, which is no, no problem. As you can see there, when you uh, grease them real good and flour them, it ain't gonna stick. And if you see, let me show you. Look in the bottom of the pan here. You can see, didn't stick at all. Yay! It's always a good day when your cake turns out good and it don't come apart when you uh, flip it out. So, gotta let it cool completely and it's gonna take probably a good, uh, probably a good couple of hours for it to cool completely, which it won't, It'll, where it's a bunt cake, it, it won't be too long. I'll check it probably after another hour and a half, but it'll be time to frost, guys. So, yum. Hey guys, look at that. That black walnut cake is ready to put some delicious cream cheese frosting on it. Y'all, this is like the perfect cake for Christmas. It's so good. And it's, you can, I mean, just, it's already cooled off, but you can still to me, I can smell the black walnuts in it. It's so good. And I'm going to um, frost it. So this is for bunt cakes. Um, you know, you don't, well, this kind of frosting, it's just best to just swirl it. You don't have to worry about being fancy. Uh, to me, I think these kind of cakes are just, um, they're just pretty, just done the old timey way, their old fashioned way. So, um, I mean, I like to decorate cakes. I like pretty rosettes and all that good stuff. But when it comes to, sometimes I just like the simplicity of a cake. And when it comes to bunt cakes, 
that's what that's what it is it's just simple just simple sometimes is just better so what i do i just pile any cakes i frost whether it be a bunt cake or a layer cake or whatever uh it's you know layer cakes or bunt cakes you always want to start um with your frosting on the top okay and put your frosting on the top and what i do i use this all of my um cake usually all my cake pans um and my spatulas that i use are all wilton wilton stuff wilton brand now to me i don't worry that this cake will have any crumbs showing <laughs> i really don't but if you put it when you put the frosting on the top like that and just let it kind of run down a little bit um you're not going to get a lot of crumbs on this cake and i'm just going to i'm going right down in the middle with my little offset spatula And you just want to make it, you're going to make some beautiful swirls in this cake. What I do, I just take it and go all the way around. Now, I prefer cakes. I prefer cakes. I don't like cold cake, okay? I like um, room temperature or warm cakes. Now, sometimes you can't always have warm cakes. Most of the warm cakes are, don't have frosting on them, but um, I don't like a cold cake, okay? For me personally. You can put this in the refrigerator for several days if you want to, then get it out and serve it room temperature, or you can, um, Serve it cold, ever how you want to. But I like a, I just wanna show y'all how I do this. But I like a room temperature cake. So you're just gonna go all the way around with your frosting until it's all the way down to the edge. Now I will be uploading the video, uh, not the video, I will be uploading the, um, the recipe, just go under photos, go under albums, and you will see this cake recipe. I uh, want to take a picture of it. Just upload it right out of um, right out of my book. And for the frosting, just go back and watch the video, and you'll see how I made the frosting. Okay, I don't. I won't have like a really a written recipe for the frosting. But it's really not difficult at all. The frosting really is um, quite easy. It's a really good, easy frosting. So I'm just gonna continue to get this done here. And when it's, uh, I'm gonna finish it all. Then when I come back, I'll show y'all what it looks like. All right, guys, look there. Black walnut cake is good it's already we've already been cutting into it <laughs> so there you go it's sliced you can see in the middle of it how dense it is it's very good look at the delicious creamy frosting on it my husband's gonna i'm gonna package this up slice the rest of it and my husband's gonna share it with some of his co-workers for christmas so this will get enjoyed Delicious black walnut cake. There's what it looks like when it's all, you can see the good walnuts in it. It's so good, y'all. Thank you for watching Mountain Cooking with Missy. Where it's nothing fancy, it's just good eating.